Now, as promised, mathematical reasoning, I'll pose it on YouTube. Now, but before that, can you do one thing for me where um, try to use um, your computer, okay? You use computer screen, and after that, you separate it side by side. And this first, first one over here, right, is on the left side. And then you just open up my tcblogspot.com. There is nine questions you open up, then after that, you compare to what I explained to you. Then after that, for this second part over here, you open up this YouTube channel. Okay, this YouTube version. Then you can compare it. Um, as you refer to the question, you can um, how's it? Um, like, uh, listen to my explanation now. So now, for under mathematical reasoning, uh, by right there is five parts. I will focus on four parts only. I will focus on four parts. Now, number one, number two, number three, and number four. Now I will separate like this. And what happened is the first two over here is easy. You know what happened here is um, under quantifier. Uh, or maybe I just write down all the subtopic first. Quantifier, operation, then after that, implication, and the last one, we name it as argument. Argument is the most important one. Where a lot of students say, hey, I apply logic, but again, I still don't get an answer, but never mind, I will use exams, uh, exam format, and after that, some patterns to help you the, uh, on this one. So I'll separate now, I'll do it later. Now, so for these three parts over here, first two parts is easy. Implication, you have to uh, how's it, uh, understand it in detail. For, for, for this one part, okay, I'll, I'll show you later. Now, so these are the sub topic. So what happened is, now, you see how I differentiate that. Under quantifier question, they won't give you a sub topic. So you, will, you, you need to refer to the question that you, you, you have to determine it. Now, under quantifier, how many statements they will give you? Just one statement. Just one statement. And when you come to operation, they will give you two statements. Okay? Don't ask me what's the meaning of statement, I will do it in normal class. You just treat it as quantifier, question based, they will give you one statement. And when you come to operation, they will give you two statements. And what happened to these two statements, I will explain. And then for implication, leave it first. Now, so what happened to these two parts here will be, okay, let me show you. Under quantifier, I didn't mention about one statement for another. Let me give you that one statement. Now, and for that one statement, now, I'll give you an example here called birds can fly. Okay, I'll put it here birds can fly. I will erase it later so you just refer this. Birds can fly. And then for this birds can fly over here, it's a statement, and again, don't ask me what the statement is. Normal class, I'll show you. Birds can fly. I want you to lead to a true statement. And to lead to a true statement, I'll give you two words. And of course, these two words belongs to belongs to quantifier subtopic. I'll put here the two words they give you will be all. Sum and these two words over here. So let me put it here QAS. Okay, quantifier all and sum. Now, so what happened is to make it a true statement, I believe based on some normal common sense, you know what's the answer, right? Okay, if you put an all, is it possible? No. Penguin can't fly, ostrich can't fly, right? right? Now, so what happened is you put here as one. Of course, you put a sum. So if you put a sum, some birds can fly, it becomes a true statement, right? right? Let me show you another example, which is easier. Right? Now, for more relevant, right? Now, how about triangles have three, look at this word, equal sides. And that's the statement. And again, don't worry about the word statement. Explanation wise, normal class, let me do it for you. Okay. Now, come to this thing and I want you to make it a false statement. A false statement, not a true one, a false statement. But before I go to a false, don't confuse yourself first. Let me ask you, to make it a true statement, Triangle have three equal sides, is it correct? If you put a all, okay, see, huh? I'll put it here first. If you put the word all, all triangle have three equal sides. To make it a true, is it correct? No. Because triangle, there is only one, one triangle have three equal sides, correct? Right? Now, so if you put a all, then it becomes a false statement. So to make it a true, you have to put a sum. But can you see they want a false? So all is a correct answer. Now, so this is how you, how you do quantify a question. And again, let me explain to you, I mean, I say, let me remind you, quantifier, this subtitle over here, they won't give it to you. You have to determine based on the question given. They give you one statement, they say, determine the true and false, you have to use the word also. Okay? Now, so now, I will erase the example over here, and I will make it operational. And under operation, they will give you two statements. And for this two statement, again, same applies to, okay, same applies to this, quantifier have two words over here, right? Operation, they will give you two two words as well, they will give you this word called N and the word called all. Okay, so I'll print here as O A O. Okay? And under this thing, let me ask you, 
Now, so two statements given, and of course, based on that two statement, you have to determine true false. Now, let me show it to you now. Okay, so what happened here is <coughs> I'll put n, 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 there is four possibility, and there will be all, 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 and all. Now, so what I put it here will be, now see how, two statements, it means you have to determine two things. Okay, true, false, true, false. Now, first statement, make it true. Second statement, make it true. This is true, false. That's false, true. That's false and false. And this is true, true. These are the possibility here. Yeah? That's it, true, false. False, true. False and false. Now, so my question to you is, if there is two true statements, your final answer is definitely true. Okay, let me put it in blue color. So I'll make it, this is definitely true, of course. False and false, definitely false, you can't argue really that. Same applies to this, true, this is false. The problem here is how we determine this today. Now, I will teach based on this thing called, it's just an example. Now, so let's make n as our parent. Just an example. Okay? And all as us. Now, so what happens is, let's treat true as a good deed. And then false is a bad deed. Okay, you did something bad. Now, did something good? Is something bad, parents say everything is wrong. So, false. Example only. Okay, same applies to this, false. And when you come to us, or you did something good, you did something bad. You were trying to cover up this, and in the end, in the end you say you did something good, right? So let's make it true. Let's make it true. Okay, just an example. Now, so based on this example over here, or maybe the final answer over here, let me give you two statements. I will erase it later. Okay, just listen to this first. Okay, statement number one, 3 plus 2 equals to 6. And the second one, I'm making Tash is a boy. Now, so based on these two things over here, number one, two statements given, let's dig them first. 3 plus 2 equals to 6, that's a false statement of course. Tash is a boy, that's a true statement. And the question here is, can you make this into a true statement? Can you make this into a true statement? And how you determine? I did mention before, there is two statements here, you have to judge it first. You judge it, to make it a true statement, let's see, false, true, to make it a true statement, you have to use the word all. So, you combine these two statements together, it becomes a compound statement. You write it here, 3 plus 2 equals to 6, you blank this thing, and you continue, touch, is a boy. You bracket, you make it a true statement, but of course, what you put in the middle to make it true, all, oh, that's all. Then you get 2 marks for this, okay, you get 2 marks for this, so this is how we see the question. Now, so operation, I just leave it, let me erase the example over here. Now, you can pause it to understand this thing. Now, and then for implication, under implication category, okay, under implication category, okay, nothing much, there is two types. Type number one, so will come out, I'll just leave it. Type number one, okay, we name it as converse statement. Now, converse statement, I'll just give you a rough idea here. Now, <clears throat> before I go into this, let me show you implication. Implication, there is a format. And that format goes this way, if, then. And the first line over here, I will give you a sentence. And that sentence, okay, I, I will give you a, a full sentence, I will give you the sentence name. We name it as antecedent. Okay, antecedent. Okay, they will come with objective. Antecedent, they will ask you what's the first sentence in front. Antecedent, what's the, what's the one behind? It will be consequent. Okay, antecedent, consequent. And what happens to corporate statement is, corporate is not a shoe brand. Okay, converse means you have to switch your antecedent and consequent sequence. Okay, then it becomes okay. Let me show you one example, just one. Now, so question what I give you is sorry, touch. I have to use your name again. If that's the question, if touch is a boy, then he has a BTG, a papa. Now, so this is antecedent, this is a consequent. Question is definitely true. My problem here is, or making the question here is, I want you to convert this question into a converse statement. To make it a converse statement, what you have to do, just like they mentioned, antecedent and consequent, you have to switch, why not? So let's switch. If touch have a BTG button, then he is a boy. Now, so once you write this thing, of course you get one mark. You haven't determined the true-false yet. So how you determine true-false? You have to you have to try to understand the whole thing first. Okay, boy, there is a button, of course. Button means boy, of course. 
So in the end, it leads to a true statement because the original meaning still remains there. So it becomes a true statement. Now, so don't worry about this. If you don't understand, normal class will, re will repeat again. Now, so this one, David, just to explain to you how corporate statement works. So if you don't know, just switch it. At least you get one Now, so next thing, come to type number two. Okay, type number two, what I do is, I'll write this here called informal word. You won't come out in your textbook or this word. Okay, I just mentioned it to you, a, a golden statement. Now, look at this common golden statement here. Look at this, this, this question. Is it a true statement? Yeah. Common statement is the true as well, right? So let's combine these two things. Again, what's the meaning of combine two, uh, two things together? It's a compound, right? right? Okay, just like I did mention, two statements, when you combine together, you get a compound statement. Same applies to this, two implications combined together, you get a compound statement. Now, so when you combine it, it becomes what? You see, look at this golden statement here, it becomes, now, see how Tash is a boy. If and only if he has a Padam PDG. Can you see this? That becomes a question. Oh, sorry, that becomes a compound statement. But of course, type number two, they will give you this thing as the question. They will give you this thing as the question. And what they want here is, please make it implication one and implication two. You have to write it down. You see, what's the format? The format will be, I will underline this, don't care about this if and only if, underline here. Why? Can you see there is two things separated up? So the first sentence here, I name it as number one, this as number two. So what you do in your exam is, you just write if number one, then number two. You can walk. And then number two, implication number two, you just divide the whole thing, you make it if number two, then number one. So what is your answer? It's the same as this. So this is how you see the question. This is the most popular one. They will seldom come out this thing called conversation. They will come out this thing called, what is it called? Um, uh, I need it as a statement. Uh, so focus on this part. Can you see the sequence over here? You will easily get how many marks here? Two marks in total. Now, so for these three marks, we just leave it. So we come to the most important one, argument. And other argument will give you the format. By using format, you can settle every question. Okay, every question. Now, so model one, model number two, and model number three. Now, I will just give you one example at all. Now, so what happened is, everything is based on format. Model 1, there is a name. I'll give you a specific name here called third party, easier for you to understand. Now, this third party. Model number 2, I put it as true. Model number 3, I make it not true. Not true. Can you see I use the word not rather than this thing called false? Okay, focus on this word, not. Okay, focus on the word not. Come to third party. Okay, see how? Instead of giving you premise, Okay, or maybe sometimes statement. Or maybe sometimes you will see this thing called implication. Now, so what I do is I will standardize. Okay, I'm just teaching you the exam format. So don't worry about these three things we just ignore. So what I do is I'll put everything as promise one, promise two, and conclusion. Don't ask me, hey, why don't you put implication? Leave it. Now, just treat it as promise one, promise two. Okay, don't care about the implication thing. Implication, when you come to this type, there's only two types. When you come to argument, these three things, to me, they are the same. Now, so come back to this, promise 1, promise 2, conclusion, same applies to this, you will get 3 parts over here, okay, same applies to this one, 3 parts over here. Now, you see how the format works and how I answer that question. Now, so, third party over here, I'll put it in red colour, see you know? Okay, promise 1 is always a combination of P1, uh, sorry, P2 plus C, promise 2 and conclusion. Premise 2 plus conclusion, premise 2 plus conclusion. So you can say that premise 1 is always the longest because it's a combination of your premise 2 and conclusion. So you come to this thing, the format works this way. Now I'll put it in red. All A are B. Okay? So that's the uh, that's premise 1. I will underline it, underline it. I will make this as number 1, this as number 2. And this is what, uh, this is what I mean, what mean by. Subject matter number one, subject matter number two. Now what happens is when you come to premise number two, see what happens. C is A. My question to you is, just now I did mention that A is subject matter number one. Can you see suddenly pop out this thing called C and it comes to third party. Third party mention number one, conclusion becomes, of course you will know the answer, it's almost the same as conclusion. Oh, sorry, it's almost the same as of premise number two. C is B. So can you see 
the format is all A are B, number one, number two, number three match number one, number three match number two. This is almost the same. So let me give you an example, easy, easier for to understand. Okay, now. So, okay, how should you know? Uh, premise one, premise two, and conclusion. All D1 student are gay. Tash is a D1 student. What's your conclusion? Okay, I will underline it, then you tell me in front of your computer. This is A, this is B. Right? Tash is the C, and C match with A. So can you tell me who is this? Of course, C match with B, right? Uh, so your answer becomes Tash is a okay. Okay, so that's your answer. Okay, so this is how easy is the question. So you just separate them using formats. That's all. Now I will leave it here. Come to this true and not true. I will give you an example of this. I will I will type it in mathematical reasoning on this block. Okay, all the questions I will write all the explanation inside so you can refer to that explanation. Now. So coming to this true thing, if P, then Q. Now, so can you see it becomes an integration? Don't worry about that, just treat it as premise. Now, P is a sentence, Q is a sentence. Okay? And then for premise number two, for true version, you will start with P is true. And this is Q is true. Look at the sequence for true. It's in the correct sequence of PQ, you see PQ. But when it comes to not true, it's almost the same, it's just that. Look at this thing. Refer to the sequence. Q is not true. P is not true. Look at the sequence. Can you see it's different? Okay, can you see I use back the word not not rather than change to another word? Okay, the main thing is coming to this again. True, if P, then Q. The first sentence here is P. They say P is true. And then the next sentence here is Q. Q is true. Sequence is P and Q. Or when you come to not true, remember you have to switch the sequence. The sequence as you switch is wrong, then too bad. Your whole question gets wrong. And remember, everything is not pathologic. When you come to mathematical reasoning, it's about exam format. So I'm teaching you exam format rather than logic. Okay? Normal class will go through more. It's just that I will go through this uh, little little things so that you can deal with your exam. Okay, now, see how? So, all the thing, mathematical reasoning, five parts in total, but I give you four only. And then, don't worry about the word statement, I'll do it in normal class. And when you come to one statement, you have to determine from the question one statement, awesome. Two statement, and all, you have to combine it into a compound statement using this final answer. And then, implication, two type of question, the most important one is this one. Can you see the format over here? And argument, three models. And you compare side by side to question one and question nine. I will write explanation inside. Okay? So have fun.